Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Jessica and I am a speech language pathologist. And if you are new here, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. Um, you will find on this channel a lot of speech therapy related content. Um, and today we are going to kind of dive into the topic of neurodiversity. This has been um, a topic of fascination of mine. Um, really more so in the past year, and I'll tell you my personal story um, in just a little bit. But we're gonna talk today about what neurodiversity is and why it's important. Um, and we're going to kind of explore this over a little bit of a series. And this series is actually part of a um, professional development course I am in the process of creating so if you think that you know you see part of this and you're like oh this looks really interesting um, I would love to get some PD on this um, stay tuned for more information and I will be rolling that out in the next couple of months like I said I do have a um, personal connection to the neurodiversity movement and um, this idea of neurodiversity and why it's important to me. I'm not going to give you too many details because, as I've mentioned some previously, um, one of my children is neurodivergent and I have been working through this journey um, as a mother and I'd like, I don't want to give too much information because it's my child and I want to respect his privacy, um, but I want you also to know that I do have a a very vested interest in this topic and it's very personal to me and so the reason why is because um, my son like I said is neurodivergent but as we've gone through this journey of being his mom and watching him grow up and both also being a speech pathologist I knew that there were some differences in his development as both his mom and a speech pathologist but no one has ever been able to actually give us really a concrete diagnosis um, that I feel like fits him. <laughs> and so at first I was really frustrated by it. And then I learned about this term neurodiversity and neurodivergence. And I thought to myself, this is him. He is neurodivergent. And I found a lot of comfort in that, in the fact that he doesn't have to have a label, he doesn't have to have a diagnosis. I am hopeful that as I teach him what neurodiversity is and what it means, that he will be able to use that to find people that he can connect with and people um, that will understand what he's going through and what his life is like. So I have researched this topic a lot as an interest as, as a mom wanting to help my child. Um, in addition to being a speech language pathologist who has always been fascinated with autism in particular, um, but now neurodiversity as I'm learning more about it. Um, and that is why I am wanting to share this topic with maybe other parents who are trying to learn more about this topic or this movement or speech pathologists who are trying to familiarize themselves more educators. Um, so that's what we're doing today. We are going to talk about what neurodiversity is. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of a history and um, like I said, this is going to be part of a series. So um, we will keep. I'll keep making some videos on this topic that kind of progress, um, not just on what neurodiversity is, but what masking is. And we're also gonna have a video that talks about specific strategies that you can use as a parent or an educator to help your students or children who might be neurodivergent. Okay, so let's talk about what is neurodiversity. Um, neurodiversity is if you just break down the words neuro meaning brain diversity meaning diverse it's really just this idea or this theory that all brains are diverse <laughs> and when you think about it you're like well obviously jessica obviously everybody's brains are diverse um but we tend to expect people to always have or 
have the same experiences that we have because we can only imagine and understand what our body goes through. We can't begin to understand what somebody else's experience is like. So this idea of neurodiversity is just the idea of everybody's brains are diverse. So it could be, you know, maybe a typical brain or it could be an autistic brain, or it could be a brain with dyslexia, or a brain with a TBI, a traumatic brain injury, or a brain of a child who has sensory processing disorder, or a child who has an emotional disturbance, or who has obsessive compulsive disorder, who has ADHD. It's just this idea, this all-encompassing word for the fact that all of our brains are different, and we should be aware of that and we should accept that not everybody's experience, everybody's neurological experience is not the same. So this quote that I read, um, this idea of neurodiversity is now created the civil rights movement. And the civil rights movement is that, you know, I'm going to say in the olden days, not really that long ago, but well, let's actually go into a timeline of um, the neurodiversity movement and it'll make more sense. Okay, so here is a timeline of neurodiversity. And in 1943, autism, what we call autism, was discovered by um, a man named Leo Kanner. He had some students that he felt like were very, you know, just kind of into themselves. They weren't really interesting in socializing or I don't know if I said students or patients. Okay. He had some patients that really weren't into talking. They had some rooted interests, were happier being by themselves. And he coined this new disorder to be autism. Around the same time in 1944, Hans Asperger, discovered Asperger's. So Hans Asperger coined his disorder as being marked by, you know, individuals who had um, a extreme intelligence, they were very verbal, um, but they had some differences that, you know, we would expect to find with what we call Asperger's syndrome today. As you may know, Asperger's does not exist in the DSM-5 anymore. So in the DSM-5, they got rid of this idea that Asperger's is its own disorder um, and that, and I'm putting the quotes on all of these because this kind of vocabulary is kind of outdated, but it is vocabulary that I feel like a lot of people are familiar with and kind of understand. So anyways, in the DSM-5, it's all just autism now. And a lot of people really didn't like that because they felt like it was almost simplifying this very complex um, neurological experience that many people have and it's not beneficial. Okay, just to call everything autism. But we're gonna put a pin in that because that's a topic for another video. And I'm stumbling over my words trying to figure out how to say it the way I want to say it. So let's move back to the timeline. So 1980s and 1990s, we start to see this prevalence of autism and it snowballs. Um, and people are starting to get really worried that it's this epidemic and that things are getting out of control. What's causing this? Why are all these children suddenly being diagnosed with autism and everybody's getting really nervous? Okay, so this is what's happening in the 80s and 90s. Um, you've probably read about this and heard about, you know, how prevalent autism is becoming. During this time in 1999, there is a um, sociologist named Judy Singer, and she coins the term neurodiversity. So this is the first time that the actual word neurodiversity has been coined. However, this idea of diverse brains has been around for a long time, um, even before that. So the term neurodiversity is coined, um, and then as a result, so remember in the 80s and 90s, the prevalence of autism has increased. 
we are now seeing investment um, in research investments for autism to find a cure, okay? Um, this is happening from about 2000 to 2011. Tons of people are throwing a bunch of money at autism research. And what they're finding is they can't, they might be able to find like some markers or some things that predict autism or could help with diagnosing autism, but nobody can find one single thing that is going to cure it. Now, this is kind of where this idea of neurodiversity and the neurodiversity movement really starts to take, you know, starts to get moving. Okay. Okay, I wanna take a second and talk about this word cure, that these researchers were looking for a cure for autism. And what that word cure tells us or shows us is that people were looking at autism as a disorder, something that needed to be fixed, um, something that was not right, um, something you know that it's this medical approach, it's a medical verbiage of, you know, there's something wrong with you. There is something wrong with the person who has autism. And the neurodivergent diversity, the neurodiverse movement, diversity, and the neurodiversity movement is really trying to shift that mindset. So it's this idea of, no, something is not wrong with you. You do not need to be fixed. You are diverse. Diversity is beautiful. Your brain is different and that's fine. And the problem is not with you. The problem is with society. The problem is that we live in a world that was not created to meet your needs. And so we need to now focus on public awareness and focusing on accepting these individuals, and I would argue not just accepting, but doing everything in our power to help them, to make society a place where they are comfortable and a place where they belong, rather than pathologizing them and saying that there's something wrong and we need to fix you. Okay, so I hope you found that little dive into neurodiversity and neurodivergence to be interesting and you enjoy kind of learning about the history of this movement. Um, like I said, this is something that is very close to my heart um, that I want to be a voice. Um, I want to use this platform and use my platform to um, educate others and to try and help make society the place that it needs to be for neurodivergent individuals. Now, I wanna go back to that quote um, that I read earlier, that the idea of neurodiversity has inspired the creation of a rapidly growing civil rights movement based on the simple idea that the most astute interpreters of autistic behavior are artistic people themselves rather than their parents or doctors. So I am very thankful I have this platform, but I am not what I would consider to be neurodivergent. Um, I would consider myself to be neurotypical. So while there is, I definitely think a place for professionals and parents to raise awareness and to have their own voice, um, ultimately we really need to be listening to autistic people or the neurodivergent people themselves. And we need to listen, first of all, um, and we need to be aware that they have things to say and we need to make a point to let them advocate for themselves. Um, so that's always my first response as a speech pathologist and as a mother is to help my students learn how to advocate for themselves. So I feel like I have a very, and we as speech pathologists have a very um, special role and unique role in trying to balance both advocating for our students, but also teaching them to advocate for themselves. Because at the end of the day, they we need to hear what they have to say. But it's again, kind of this balance of, you know, a 
a child doesn't come out into the world knowing how to advocate for themselves. They have to be taught that. So I feel like um, as speech pathologists and as parents and educators, this is something we really need to be aware of so that we can hear their voice is we need to teach them to have a voice, teach them to say what needs to be said to advocate for themselves. So I'm starting to ramble. I feel very strongly about this. <laughs> Hopefully my heart is coming out in this video. I know um, these can be really sensitive topics for a lot of people and I understand that. Um, so I hope you just know that I am coming at this from an angle of love and of you know, just wanting to educate people and bring awareness to a topic that I um, am passionate about. So again, like I said, this is part of a professional development course I'm in the process of making. So um, you can stay tuned to my website. I will be getting like a page set up for that soon. Or you can, you know, follow my email and I'll be marketing that whenever it's ready. Um, so stay tuned for that <laughs> is what I'm saying. All right, I'm gonna go because I'm rambling and um, thank you again for stopping by. If you want to see the next section in this video, um, I'm going to be talking about the difference in neurodiversity and neurodivergence and um, see you soon. <laughs>